What's up, boys? Today we're gonna be doing a player review on 87 rated center mid fantasy foot Mikel Marino. I packed this guy out of my campaign party bag pick or whatever you want to call it, the one of two. And I think he's a decent player. He's not anything crazy. He goes for about like 50k around there. Not I don't even know if he goes 50k anymore. Yeah, okay, yeah, 50k around that, like 51k. So not too super expensive. He's La Liga Spanish, so you know he's gonna get an insane amount of strong links that there is an endless amount of strong links if you're spanish and from la liga which is incredible because center mids need a lot of links they got in pretty much every single formation center mids have two three four links going into them so very solid there he is holy king he's got 80 plus on every single stat the one thing i noticed about this guy is he's very average but average in a good way i don't know how to explain it he you look at his stats and nothing wows you it's just so Average. Look at his in games. He, or just even his base stats: 83 pace, 83 shooting, 85 passing, 88 dribbling, 85 defending, and 85 physical. His highest stat is dribbling, but he has three-star skills, so he can't really utilize the best of his dribbling. So that 85, 88 dribbling is really like 83 dribbling, like the rest of his stats, which are around 83. So if this guy gets an upgrade, a plus one, plus two, or plus three, if this guy goes to a 90, I think he will be very, very good. He'll have 86 pace, 86 shooting, 88. <laughs> 88 passing, 91 dribbling, 88 defending, and 80 and 88 physical. So that is that's very good. But right now, I think he's just an average player. He's good in game. Don't get me wrong. I used him in game. I think he's very good. But he's nothing crazy. There's no wow factor. And I think especially in this year with the amount of options we have at pretty much every position for a cheap price, you can get players with more of a wow factor. You can get players that are fat, faster, stronger. More, more defensive, more attacking, better dribbling, better passing, but you're not going to get the balance that you get with this guy, which is something to look out for for the price. To have that balance is very, very solid. He's 6'2 as well, which is a very average, it's not an average, it's above average height, but for midfielders, it's it's, it's done tall side, but it's still not anything crazy, tall or short. He's high, high work rates, which is very good. Midfielders, especially ones that are going to be getting up the pitch back box to box sort of vibes need to have high medium work rates or medium to medium high so they stay back a bit more but i think high high definitely fits him very well looking at the in games he's got some pretty interesting stats he's got 89 shot power which is very good most of his, his finishing stats 84 and the rest of the stats under shooting are around 80 except for volleys and and pens pace wise acceleration is a bit low i would put a chem style on on his pace if you want him to be more attacking go hunter if you want him to be more defensive put a shadow on him i know it sounds easy to say but he needs pace he needs either defending or shooting whether depending on which side you really want to get the most out of him i think most of you're going to play him in a box to box so he will be in both ends of the pitch but what whatever side you feel like is lacking more i feel like shooting is lacking a bit more but you do make more tackles and you do shoot on goal as a midfielder so maybe shadow is the better option that's really up to you guys i think one of those two either of those two is very very good and we'll just it, it's more about personal preference at that point take a look at the passing stats very solid passing stats 88 short passing 86 long passing but you don't really need to touch the short touch the passing at all good vision not so good crossing but midfielders don't really cross curves solid and same thing with the dribbling i wouldn't really touch the dribbling the agility and balance is a bit low but i think it's fine he's 6-2 he's not going to feel like anything crazy but he does have 90 reactions 90 ball control and 89 dribbling which is very very solid and this is without an upgrade so that should definitely get better 86 composure as well is going to help the shooting as his finishing is a bit low and his shot power is pretty high it's a solid shot power and with the interceptions defensive stats 87 interceptions 87 standing tackle very solid there which the defensive awareness was a bit higher only at 83 that is a big reason why i think you should put the shadow on him the reason you put the shadow is to get the defensive awareness up and the reason you put the, the hunter is to get the finishing up so i think you're just going to want to put the shadow to get the defensive awareness up because he's going to be making more tackles than he is going to be through on goal he is going to be on the attacking in the pitch but he's going to be facilitating play he's not really going to be ripping long shots he does have 83 long shots but he's not going to be really pinging them from deep like that much he's going to be intercepting cutting off the passing lanes trying to make tackles and win the ball back for you to sort of launch the attack physical stats once again bang average 88 stamina it's flirting with the line of usable and not usable especially for someone that's going to be up the pitch back and back down he needs good stamina. It didn't really bother me too much in game, but I can definitely see if you make a lot of tackles with this guy or if you're in a game where you need to possess the ball a bit more, you're feeling a lot of pressure, 
His stamina could tend to tank a little bit. Strength, aggression, not bad. I like that they're close together. Aggression being higher than strength, I do like as well. Aggression is, in my opinion, has more of an impact in game than strength. Jumping, solid there. He's 6'2", so he doesn't need to jump that high, but he still can. Traits wise, flare, long shot taker, and outside the foot shot. Very good traits. Long shot taker is good, especially for center mids that end up just hitting those long shots. I know I said he, earlier he doesn't have great long shots, but he has good shot power. So pairing long shot taker with flare and with outside the foot shot as a midfielder coming in late runs, just sort of pinging him first time, trying to green time it with outside the foot shot. It's going to go in the top bins. Outside the foot shot is my favorite, my favorite player trait this year. It's so good, so impactful, and makes such a difference. It, it's, it makes a visible difference when you use any card in game. Uh, midfielder, but more attackers, but midfielders as well, especially if they're going to be getting forward. For this guy, I think Real Sociedad, they're not doing incredibly well in La Liga, but I think they can get the plus one. I don't know if he'll be able to get the plus two upgrade, but I don't know. It's a bit, it's a bit difficult. It's a bit difficult. So, he needs three appearances in the next five games. I think he can do that. One win in the next five games, I think he can do that as well. So he's probably going to get two upgrades up to an 89. And then the third upgrade possibility is for attackers and midfielders, which he is. He needs one goal or one assist. That is a bit dodgy for attackers and mids. For defenders and goalkeepers, it's one clean sheet. So I feel like a clean sheet is a lot easier than a singular player getting one goal or an assist. But... That's really going to do it, boys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. hope you guys enjoyed Fantasy Foot. It's coming to an end when you see this. But it's really, honestly, just starting because all these players are going to get uh, upgraded as the next, as the domestic league kicks off after World Cup qualifying just finished. So if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time for some more FIFA content.